Alola, welcome to the Wolf Pack. My name is Santa Stress 83. Welcome to uh, to another weird game. Here's what's this one called again? Hold on, let me figure this out. Oh, it's called Mystery of the Murder's Dream. Hold on, I'm gonna turn down the volume because it's annoying. That's better. It feels like so strange to be back. I look up at the school where I'll be attending classes for the rest of the year. Moving into the town would feel strange enough as it is. But what really makes it this transfer surreal is that I lived here once before. This was my childhood home until Dad got a new job and we had to move. I never thought I would be back, but my parents passed away in an accident and I've come to live with my grandparents. What a twisted series of events. And to make matters worse, I barely even remember my childhood here. This could be quite a year. When I find my classroom, I sit down near the back. Everyone thinks it's strange and new. And I can't shake the surreal feeling, feeling from coming back after all this time. Hello, are you new? Yeah, I just transferred here. If you have any questions, just ask me and I'll be happy to help. Thanks. Who are you talking? Oh. The second girl draws back when she sees me. Huh? Hang on. Are you two twins? That's right. I'm Jafuyu and this is Chinatsu. I'm Sand. It's great. It's good to meet you both. Hi. Don't mind her. She's a little shy. Jafuyu. How should I respond? Don't worry, I don't bite. Um, it was a joke. Huh. And then does that mean you do bite? What? No. I see my attempt telling that the mood has been a complete disaster. Just never mind. <laughs> it might be fun to have you around. Ha, thanks. Is something wrong? When you smile, it doesn't quite reach your eyes. Are you sad because you had to leave your old school? Well... Sort of. I, you know, I can relate to this the main character in this game. I had you that too at one point, back when I was in high school. Yeah, it feels weird to confide in people I've just met. But now that they've asked, I find myself wanting to talk about it. Besides, I feel drawn to them in a strange way. The thing is... I moved here because my parents passed away recently. Oh no, I'm so sorry. Okay, the, the, thing, the part where the parents died part, the, the parents died part, never happened to me. I had to go to a different, I went to, I got transferred to a different school for other reasons, for other reasons. I know how rough you, that can be, our parents are dead too. Really? Yes, it happens quite a while ago, but sometimes it still hurts. Yeah. Maybe it's fate that we ended up sitting together. Huh? Fate? You know, we've been through something similar. Hold on, no. Uh, I love this music, but I can't handle it. You know, we've been through something similar. So maybe we are meant to be help you. She helps me. She blushes and ducks her head as if embarrassed that she spoke up at all. <laughs> That's a nice thought. Fade or not, I'm glad I met you two. This is the cafeteria. Do you want to eat here, or would you rather go back to the classroom? The teachers don't really mind uh, really mind where we eat as long as we don't clean up afterward. I can't get over how weird it feels here. It's, it's so much smaller than my old school. Even the cafeteria feels like a tiny little gathering instead of the crowded room I'm used to. It doesn't matter to me. What do you two prefer? The cafeteria. The library. The library. You eat lunch in a library? Sometimes, yes. She blushes and looks away. See, I told you that's weird. It just surprised me. She goes to the library so she can read scary stories while she eats. I keep telling her it's weird, but she won't listen. You only make fun of me because you're too scared to read those stories. I am not. God. 
I never, actually, I never ate lunch in the cafeteria. I always, okay, in middle school, I normally ate, I stopped eating it in the cafeteria. I never ever once ate in the library. Back in middle school, I started eating my lunches outside the cafeteria, like in a little hallway, because there was like a nice bench there, and I could lay on it at times. Yeah. In middle, in high school, hmm, I sometimes I ate in, my, in high school, I sometimes, my first high school, I sometimes ate in the cafeteria. Okay, I never ate in the cafeteria there. I always ate in like, sometimes I ate with someone, I sometimes ate in three different places. But in like my other high school, the one I graduated from, sometimes I ate in the cafeteria, sometimes I ate in this other room that used to be, that was what was, was where I used to go to was once known as the Wolf's Den. To eat sometimes. Sometimes I just ate outside. Yeah. A lot of memories there. From the way they argue, I can tell this must be a common debate for them. Judging by the smiles of several students and cafeteria staff, they're familiar with it too. A few people give me curious looks and begin whispering to one another. This is one of those towns where everyone knows everyone's name, isn't it? I already feel like an outsider. Like I'm intruding on a place where I'm not wanted. Shaking her head, Jafiyu turns her attention back to me. Do you want to eat with me, Sand? That's right. What am I, what am I thinking? I'm not a complete outsider. I've already made at least one friend. Sure, if you want me to. I'd love it. I glance at Chinatsu. What about you? If you'd rather have lunch alone with your sister, I'll understand. No, that's okay. I like having you around. I thought you were going to the library. I didn't say it, I didn't say it was going today. I like to eat with sand. She does? She said she said so little. I thought she was uncomfortable with me here. Well, I guess some people are just quiet. Knowing Chinatsu, she wants me around too. Makes me less awkward. In that case, let's see. Uh, why can't life? Why couldn't life be like this? You know. Not only do we have lunch together, but we also end up staying with the twins for most of my classes. Jafiyu makes sure I know where I'm supposed to go and tells me everything I need to understand about the school. Her little sister starts to open up a little more as the day goes on. Although, the, she remains quiet. By the time the school day is over, I feel better about being here. Thanks for helping me out today. Don't mention it. I'm glad we got to meet you, San. Yeah, me too. Tag I could walk home from school. But my grandparents recommended uh, taking the bus. It's quite a hike to get home from here. That's the trouble with the rural, with a rural area like this. Long stretches of nothing before you get anywhere. Hey, is there anything you can tell me about this town? My memories of living here were faint, but by which I remain, I mean they're practically non-existent. It's also been over 10 years since I was last here, so who knows how much the town has changed by now. Sure, what do you want to know? What should I ask about? Anything I should watch out for? Don't forget to look both ways while crossing the street. I mean like dangerous parts of town are people who get, might give me trouble. Uh, huh? I don't know anything about anything like that. Really? It's a pretty peaceful town. There's not much to worry about. But whatever you do, do don't go near Ichika's mansion. You're not so. You said you wouldn't talk about that anymore. Ich Ichika's mansion? What's that? In contrast of how, to how quiet and withdrawn she was for most of the days, of the day. Now Chinatsu leans forward towards me with excitement shining in her eyes. Ichika's mansion is a big mansion on the edge of town far from the road. It's a dark, terrible place and if you dare set foot inside, you'll be cursed. Cursed? That's right, they say. Chinatsu! Come on! Ah, okay. You and your spooky stories. She doesn't like it when I talk about things like that. <laughs> I can tell. Well, this is unexpected. Usually I find the two of you waiting alone. At the end of the day, I didn't think. The newcomer trails off when she sees me. She stares, she stares at me with her eyes wide. Um, hi? Why is she staring at me like that? She gives me the creeps. Is it really you, San? Why'd you come back here? How should I respond? Um, how do you know my name? What? Just now, you called me Sand, but I never introduced myself to you. How do you know who I am? Oh, for a moment, she seems sad, but then she strains her shoulders. 
So you've forgotten me then. That's okay. Forgotten? You mean wait? China, so Chi you. There's something I need to finish up. I just came to tell you I'd be a little late. Before I can stop her, she turns around and walks back into the school building. That was creepy. Who was that girl? Did she know me from before I moved away? What was that all about? Huh? Wait a minute. His name is Sand, right? Yeah? She not so leans close to her sister and whispers something in her ear. Chifu stares at me, then whispers something back. What are they talking about? I frown at the two of them and try to figure this out. Now that I think about it, there's something faintly familiar about the twins. I must have met them when we were children. Hey, can I... Before I can ask them about it, I ask, I spot the bus I'm supposed to take home. Aw, oh, man, I need to get going. I'll see you two tomorrow. Have a good day, Sand. Stay away from Ichiko's... Ow! Chinatsu's rub... Chinatsu rubs her side where her Ichifu just elbowed her. Then she resumes waving to me as the bus. I run towards my bus. Interesting. I find an empty seat on the bus and sit down. No one takes my, the seat next to me, so I stretch up. Soon the bus is driving down the street. This has been a really rough period of time for me, but talking to Chinatsu and Chifuyu helped, me, helped cheer me up. I feel like we can become good friends. Maybe things are going to be okay after all. I'm curious about that other girl, though, too. How does she know me? I must have met the twins before I moved. But they didn't seem to recognize me at first. That third girl, though, she acted like I should know who she is. Maybe tomorrow I can ask Chifuyu about her. With no one to talk to, I look out the window as we drive away from the school. Before long, we, live, we leave the edge of the town's more populated area and drive past vast fields and farms on the, our way to the outskirts. In the distance, a tall mansion looms over the town from atop a steep hill. Hey, that must be what Ch Ch Chinatsu was talking about. What did she call it again? Ichika's mansion? Chinatsu really wanted to, to tell me about the cursed mansion. I've always loved ghost stories and tales about the cult. I'm not surprised a tiny town like this has its ghost story. Maybe tomorrow we'll find some t time away from her sister, and she not so can tell me the rest. I stare at the window, out the window at the mansion as we pass. From the looks of it, it it's been abandoned for years. It certainly looks like a cursed place. No wonder what there are ghost stories about it. I yawn and lean back in the seat. My grandparents live in a remote spot on the other side of town. It'll still be a while before we get there. It was a long day. I close my eyes and soon drift into sleep. What? I jerk away. What? Blinking before I give... Before, blinking, I give a shake. Something startled me from my sleep, but I'm not sure what. I can't believe it. I fell asleep on the bus home. I hope I didn't miss my stop. I look around and freeze. What in the world? The students who were on the bus with me when I fell asleep are gone now. Instead, there are five passengers, each staring straight ahead. They are they were as, all as pale as, cor as corpses. Their eyes nearly as vacant. Each one of, has a piece of paper pinned to their chest, like a name tag or label. Confused, I read each of the labels on the five passengers. Skewered, suffocated, roasted, frozen, and disintegrated. Huh? Next stop, skewered. Hey, next stop, but skewered isn't a location. Hey, does anyone know what's going on? The other passengers ignore me. They continue to stray or, you know, stare straight ahead. I look out a window. Instead of the grassy fields, I saw before falling asleep. Or the wide roads of town. We're now driving through what looks like some sort of dark tunnel. What's going on? Did I miss my stop? Where are we? None of this makes any sense. Could this be a dream? The bus lurches to a stop. Nobody moves. Are we waiting for more passengers? My skin crawls. I'm tempted to jump out and run out of here. Even though I don't know where I am. At least if I get off this creepy boss, I might be able to find my way back home on foot. What should I do? I'm leaving. I don't care. I'm leaving. This bus is giving me creepy vibes. That's it. I'm getting out of here. I've got a bad feeling about this bus. Something isn't right. If I stay here, who knows where I'll end up. I jump up to my feet. Or at least I try to... What? 
No matter how hard I try, I can't move. I'm frozen in place as though some unseen force is holding me in my seat. Oh, no, no, no. If I had a bad feeling about this, about this before, it's nothing compared to how I feel now. This isn't good. I'm stuck here. I'm trapped. The bus door slides open. Wait, what? What the fuck is that thing? A single passenger gets on board. A human-sized rabbit carrying a large scythe, like the sort an executioner would have used in medieval times. Okay, that's it. I'm dreaming. The realization is that is must that this must be a dream doesn't eat my growing tens tension. If I if it's a dream, I want to wake up. I'm probably missing my stop right now. I'm pinching my arm, but the chill of pain doesn't do anything except make me make me wince. While I try desperately to wake up myself up. The rabbit stalks toward down the hall. It stops in front of the person, the passenger whose label reads Skewer. For the first time, I realize he's a boy around my own age. Cold dread seizes me as I watch. No. Oh my! In one swift movement, the rabbit thrusts the scythe into the boy's stomach. The boy lets out a choked gasp and coughs up blood. The rabbit continues scythe to drive the scythe down forward before lifting him into the air to show he's been completely impaled. Almost carelessly, the creature froze the boy's body into the aisle. No, no, get me out of here. I looked around in desperation for a way to escape. Maybe this is a dream. Man, I have nothing to worry about. But what if it isn't? After all, I can't wake up. I pinch myself again with no luck. The rabbit steps back into the aisle and turns toward the door. Thank God it's leaving. Then it pauses, it turns around. It looks straight at me. What do you want? Who are you? My the voice my voice sounds tiny and frightens the to my own ears. The rabbit and I stare across the bus at each other. Then to my work it hefts its life against again begins walking toward me. What is it? Is this just a nightmare? But then why can't I wake up? Am I going to die here? No. Well that's it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. See you all next time. Bye guys.